Hello everyone out there. Welcome to Solve It Out. This is Annie here and today's project is mini clone of Google Form. Google Forms are the most widely used services in our day-to-day -day work life because maybe it's some review or some interview. We definitely choose one and only Google Forms for our various works. Now Today, I'm going to do a mini clone of the Google Form. Let me show you a demo here. So this is our application where you can see this is the first uh, part where you can write a title and a form description. So let me write it. Just remove this and write a new form. Okay. And a form description. Now let me add a question. As you can see, this is the question field. The answer will be of type short answer. Here I can change the question type. So here I have two options. One is short answer and one is paragraph. If I change paragraph, this becomes a text area. And if I want to change, this becomes a short answer. So let me first write a short answer, like short question actually your name and then next let me add another question and here I want to change the type to paragraph next I want to delete my first question here and I can also delete that select the first question and click this delete option you can see your name has been deleted now only two questions are left so with this two question, I want to save my form. And here I click save form. You can see my new form is saved here on the all form section. If I click on the open, my form is right here for the user to use it. This is my form title, my description, my two questions and their types. Maybe paragraph and short answer. So this platform is majorly created on Next.js 14. I have used Ant Design for some components. Majorly I have used Telvin CSS and Redux Toolkit for the state management. Of course there is the usage of MongoDB for our backend purpose. So are you guys excited? Let's jump on to the code. For the Google Form clone, I have already installed Next.js previously you can see we are working on next year's 14.2 and um, we are using telvin css and typescript of course now here this is our file and folder structure i have already created the file and folder structure because it will help us in further to understand the components which are going to use you can see here inside the app folder We are having the API, the form, the form list, and the normal page.tsx. Inside components folder, there are some question types and some other components. As we'll move further, you will get a detailed description about why we are using these components. So if I go to our main page, that is page.tsx inside app folder, you can see here I have removed the initial code. And have just written the form element. Now, this form element is coming from the components form, and here I have just described the component. So, if I run here npm run dev, then you can see in our local host only the form is showing. So, now let's work on the form component at first so to start with the form component we first have to do the navbar component and before that i'm going to install some third party libraries which i'm going to use in for the process so here i want to install redux js toolkit and design moment mongoose and react redux we are using redux toolkit for our state management 
and uh, moment js is will be used for the uh, display of time and to design i'm going to use for some components and mongoose of course for our mongodb so our all packages are installed now we'll move to the navbar.tsx here and i'll quickly write the code here Here inside the navbar, there will be two options. One is the create prompts, and another is the form list. So, as in the deployed link, you can see we have a create forms here, and a forms button is here where it's going to show all the list of the forms that is created. So, according to that, in the navbar, we'll have inside a div class. We are going to describe uh, the create from and the forms link. So this is the miniature design that is done and the links here that is given. This slash will be our home page and this slash form list we have already defined the folder here inside our app that is this form list page. Okay. So this will be uh, currently linked to our navbar as we click save on it and now if we go and check our navbar we cannot see anything here because we haven't called our navbar inside our form component so first let's remove this form name and call the navbar here as you click save you can see our navbar is present here we on click to the our forms this form list is coming and here it's our local host. Okay, so our navbar is done. Next, we'll move to our first component in our forms folder. That is on the deployed link. You can see this is our first component, this untitled form title and description part we are going to create. So let's create that. I will start with the background color. So inside a div. I will give this background color with a width full, display grid, margin auto, and min height screen with a padding of top and down 10. You can see this is our background color. Next, I'll write a form here inside the div. As we will be submitting the question, so I'm taking this form field. Inside the form field, I want to write a div here where I want to give a max width of 3xl along with a flex, display flex. And from MD, it will be flex row. And after, below MD, it will be flex column. And then justify center with align item center. Inside this div, I want to create the Border part a border of this above border in the deployed link want to create this part. So I've created inside a div where there is a border of top with eight width and it should be rounded. This is the border color with the background white and the max width is 2xl with the shadow and some display CSS. Inside the div, I will be creating our first input field. Where you can see it's surrounded by a border of light gray and then Inside that, we have an input field here, which will be of type text, and it's a required field. And the class name is like text of 3xl with an outline none, and the font bold with a capitalize and border bottom, with a focus of border bottom 2. And border color will be border gray 200 with a padding top and bottom. And the focus border color is given. Let us save and check how it's looking.
you just go to our local host and you can see this is our input field like when we click on it then our border bottom color is changing okay so this is working fine next we'll add another input field for our description as you can see in the deployed link we have a title field and a description field so we'll add our description field so below the input field here i'm going to put our description field it contains almost the same class name uh, css so and input type is also text and it's required and it has a placeholder in extra showing the form description i save it you can see here our form description and our first component is created now here like in the deployed link i want to add a state here where it will first show the untitled form and whenever i'll like to change i can change it to any random names so want to create this part here so for that we are going to need the redux toolkit so let us create it so to start with the redux state first uh, i'll go to the form slice and here i'll describe or define an interface here that is form state where i'm taking title means i'm defining the types here and have imported create slice and payload action from redux js toolkit next i'll set the initial state form state title will have the untitled form and description will be empty now using create slice i'm going to define the reducers first in the const variable i'll define the create slice then we'll define a name, define the initial state, and then the reducers. The first reducer will be the title, naming it set title, taking our state and action, defining its type as the payload action, and it will be as of string type. Here I am defining it as state dot title is equal to action dot payload. This part we will receive from the our um, form dot tsx file we'll dispatch our action and then we'll fetch that in our state after set title there will be set description our form slice is created now we are going to export it we are going to export both the set title and set description as the actions and as the default export will do the reducer so now save it and let us call this reducer in our store.ps first we'll import configure store and form reducer configure store from redux js toolkit then we'll create the store constant value where we'll call the configure store and initialize uh, the reducer here Finally, we export it, export the root state for the type and the app dispatch for using the use dispatch function. And finally, the default store. Now, to make the Redux toolkit work, we need to wrap up our children component in the provider. So, we have to go to our layout.tsx. Here, we need to wrap our children with the provider but uh, this layout.tsx is actually a server component we'll need a client component for the provider so we'll create another page or you can say a component we'll first import the provider from react redux and the store also on the top we'll write the use client as this is a client component now in the provider layout we will be wrapping up our children in the redux provider and finally we'll export it we'll call this provider layout in our layout.tsx
and we'll wrap our children here. So now our Redox toolkit will work. Let us go back to our form component and call our title using use selector. Before that, we need to make this a client component to use dispatch exactly. Then using use selector, we can call the title. Export the root state and the use selector. Now, this title is exactly we are calling from our Redux state. But before calling this title, we also need to pass our data to our Redux state. So, to do that, we need to go to our input state. This is our first title input, and here we'll put a value and the on change function in the value i'm calling the title or either it will contain the title or it will be empty and this handle title change let us write down the function now for handle title change i'm taking an event and giving it prevent default so that uh, it doesn't refresh and for the dispatch we'll call the use dispatch function here we'll define the use dispatch also import it and we'll import the set title from our slice okay redux form slice so our title is defined now let us save and check it you can see untitled form this is our initial state so it's showing the untitled form now if i remove and write maybe solve it out the state is now containing the solve it out if i refresh it will again contain the untitled form. So in a similar way, let us now write the description part. In the description input, we'll write again a value and an on change. And the description, let us first call from the Redux and the on change function. We'll write after that. So below the title, the description is now being called. It's coming from the same state, state.form.description. Now we'll write the handle description change function. In a similar way, as of handle title change, I have uh, just prevent, used prevent default so that it doesn't refresh and then dispatched the target value. Now let me import it and it is done. Now you can also write some description. So both are now working fine let's move to the adding question part first we are going to add the edit button where we can add a question or delete a question so i'll call here at first inside a div the edit component i will first write the edit component then we move forward with the question part so here in this edit component i'm going to first import some images and the image tag from next. Then I'm going to define a div with some CSS styles here with the background gray, shadow, padding four. From MD, it will be padding two or margin left of two, rounded of the border radius and the display flex. From MD, it should maintain the column wise. And a gap four with a justify center and align item center. Next, we'll define another div. Now, this div will actually have the image inside it. Okay, this div, the add image. If I click save, then you can see here the plus image is added. Uh, we can like click on it, and our question will be added. Also, I need to add the delete function. The delete function will be added just after the add function. We'll save and you can see here the delete icon is now present. Now, we'll put a condition check here that whether to show the delete function or not. So, we are going to define some on click functions and a Boolean variable. The three props of this edit 
component will be handle add, handle delete, and show. Handle add will be the part of this div on click. On click on the add function, handle add should work. And for the delete div, on click on it should delete. Also, put a check here that if not show, then the handle delete will come into view. After saving this, let's go back to the form and let's define the functions here. We'll create the handle add and handle delete question function. For the show, I don't want the first, uh, like, we do not have any first question. So, we don't want to delete because we don't have any question right now. So, the show will be here inside this edit and the handle delete. We'll do it for a check. So let's define these two functions. Now for handle add, we are going to write a dispatch function at question. And for handle delete, we are going to write a dispatch function delete question. So let us go to our form slice and write these two dispatch functions. To add a question, first in the interface we need to add the type for the question i'm taking an array which will contain a title and the type both are of string type and an active question index like for a particular question it should show that this is the active question now or the user is pointing to this question now then let us define the initial state the active index will be null and the question will have an empty array now we'll write the reducer Now for add question, I'm creating a new object, new question. Initially, it will have an empty title and the type will be of short answer. So this is a default type. And finally, I'm returning the state and the questions using the spread operator to keep a copy of the previous question and also concat the new question inside the array. And for the active question index, I'm just giving the question length. Also export this reducer inside our action. Next we'll write the delete. That is uh, if I go back to the form state and import it. Our add question is now imported. Next we'll write the delete question. So go back to form slice. Below the add question, we'll write the delete question. Here I'm taking a state and the action as our parameter. And I'm defining the index here from the action.payload. I'm taking the index and I'm splicing it down the one I need to delete it and setting the active question index according to the last length of the remaining question. Also, need to update the active question index here. So, in another reducer, we'll update the active question index payload which we are going to use very soon in the form. So together, let us export it and save it. Go back to form and import it. Now the error is gone. To remove this question error, this question is actually called from the Redux state. So let us call here. Using use selector from our state.form.questions, we are fetching the questions in the state and we are showing it here so if i save it now you won't be able to see anything when i click because we are not defining the questions yet so let us define it here let us call our question component inside a div i'm going to call the question for the question component first let us write a div with some css class a basic display with a flex row, a flex column, justify center, item center with full and a max width of 3xl with a margin auto. Next, for we'll put a check here. Like if it is an active index, we are going to show some border there. Next, we'll put some border color according to our active index that we have uh, defined in our Redux. 
so that it uh, shows something different when it is uh, like the current or the active in question when we select it will be different from the other questions present in the form here if the active question index is equal to the current index then we'll have a border of left with the color here else our border will be plain and it will be gray so no difference and some basic uh, css like background white with a max width of 2xl a shadow a width full a grid display grid place item center and for lg it will be from start for the desktop view there will be margin left of 10 and also margin auto now this active index and index we will be getting from our props so let us define it actually we will have a bunch of props let me define all together so this will be our bunch of props that is it will contain index value at question handle delete is active question and on click and this is our types definition of each of them so first uh, index has been already used we'll use the on click here like whenever this div will be clicked it should show the on click function for the active question index we are going to call it from our redux we'll call the active question index from our form dot active question index we'll import the use selector and the root state and also we'll write here use client as this is a client component whenever we are using the dispatch next for our question text or the question itself we need to have a input field so this will be our input field here a basic class name is given at the top you can check it out from the github code and here a input field is here where a handle change and an on change function is given which will actually contain the question the title in the value is actually coming from our props so let us destructure it the title and type that is coming from our props if the title value is done now the handle change to write the handle change first uh, the use dispatch is called and inside the handle change i'm dispatching the update question title function where it will have two parameters that is index and the title inside handle change i am passing the target value and here this function we need to create in our slice inside our form.slice let us add another reducer update question title now here in the payload action it's taking the index which type of number and the title the type of string and we are restructuring it and inside the state we are according to the index we are setting the title next we'll export it and save it in the question tab we are going to import it and our handle change is done after the input i'm going to call a select handler the select will be from the ant design we'll import it from ant from this select we can select the options like whether a question will be short answer or a paragraph it will have a placeholder where select question type a style which defines the width of 300 and options which have a value and a label okay both are the same short answer or paragraph for select there will be an on change and a value field the value will be content of type which we are destructuring it from the value props that we are getting and for the on change function 
going to define this handle type change. The handle type change will have a value string and it's similar to the handle change uh, like the update question title. It will also have a reducer which uh, will name the update question type and it will have the parameters index and the value. So inside the form slice, we'll define another reducer update question type taking the index and type string the structuring it the payload here and assigning it to the state we'll export it and we'll save it import it in the question below the select we are going to portray or display the type of question that is selected that whether it's a text area whether it's an input field according to the question type the component will be shown so for that we are going to conditionally render the file so we'll define the queue type here but before that i'm also going to add the edit option for each question So if it's the active question, then the edit handler will come into view and we'll import it and the handle add and the handle delete function, we are all getting it from our props. Last, we need to define this queue type. Let's do it. First, we'll define a data here, which will contain two components, short answer and paragraph. Next, we'll define the queue type. Below the handle type change, we can define the queue type as from data, we are going to find the element and will match with the title and our type that we are receiving from our props. So on match, it will define the question type. Now, for this two component, we are going to create it now. So inside our queue types, inside components, we have queue types folder here. Inside folder, there is a short answer and there is a paragraph component present. I will quickly write this. But first, in our question, let us import this so it doesn't create any error. Okay, from the question tab, all our work is done. Now I'll quickly write the short answer and let us import all the it from the form tab. For short answer, we are going to write an input field here with some CSS, like some basic CSS with a font medium, capitalize, a border, bottom, a focus border with a color and a focus uh, on focus there will be a different color with a width full. So this, uh, with this minimum input field CSS, our short answer is done. We'll move to the paragraph component and our paragraph will contain the text area with a similar class name. Just the difference is that one is text area and the another is the input field. We'll save it and our question types is done. Next, let us import our question tag with our props in the form component. So this is our question props like on click, key, index, value, add question, handle delete and is active question. Now the index here is actually coming from remember in the form slice in our Redux we have taken the question as an array. So to view the question here, we should like map out the array. So this should change to questions.map, the question, the index, and then we should call this question component. So that each question gets mapped and follow this same pattern every time. Now this questions is actually we are calling it from our Redux, as you can see, using use selector. 
and this handle question click and active index we are going to fix it right now the active question we are going to call it from our dispatch so we are going to use the selector and see the handle the active question index is called and remaining is this handle question click for this we will be calling our set active index function from our redux which we have previously defined so this is done next i want to put a check in this edit function that is whenever i'm calling the edit in the actual form like if there is no question present then i don't want to show it uh, like the delete function so i want to put a check here that whenever the question dot length will be zero then only this edit button will show because this button doesn't contains the delete option as the show field is true here so it will only show the add option and that is only possible when there is no question present finally i'm going to define a button here so that the one or the admin who is creating the form can actually create it and store it in database so i'm going to create it here so before the form tag is ending i'm going to create this that when questions dot length is greater than zero that time only the button should appear it should have a div class name with a display grid place item center that it, the button should be at the center point the button has a type of submit and the basic css with the background and the text white and the padding and with the border radius rounded now when there is a loading option here it should show processing and the other should show the save form so this loading state we are going to define now this is our loading state we'll use use state here now before like submitting the function or creating anything let us check whether our form or the questions are appearing as we want or not let's refresh it once now as i want only the plus sign is showing at first that when the question length is zero on clicking the plus sign you can see our question has appeared and also the button as we want the button when there is like the question length is greater than zero now here i can write a question like your name and i can change this from short answer to paragraph and paragraph to short answer it's working perfectly fine next i want to add another question and as i click here you can see this is our active index working here i want to write describe yourself and this should be obviously paragraph also i want to check if our delete function is working so i want to delete this first question then if i click on the delete the first question got deleted now so our add function delete function changing or selecting our question type and the active index both are working exactly fine now we are going to save the form in our mongodb so let us do that let us create our APIs first and then we are going to save our form. First, we are going to go to our utils folder and inside I'm going to create first a mongo.ts and a model. With the file form.ts. We'll import mongoose at first and then we'll define a schema. Inside the form schema, I'm creating new mongoose.schema, which will have a title with a type string and required true, a description with a type string required true, and question will have a question schema and it will have a created date. As default for the question schema, 
it will have a title and a type with the enum value paragraph and short answer as we are like working on two values so it will i'll describe it in the enum as there is no dynamic type so i am statically defining it and finally we are going to export the form schema we are exporting it inside the form constant we are defining the mongoose.model form and then the form schema finally we are exporting the form so we'll save it and we'll define the mongo.ts for the mongo.ts i'm defining mongoose importing mongoose from the mongoose library then inside the connect function i'm connecting the mongo uri on connect it will show mongodb connected and on this connection it will show the mongodb error now for the process.env.mongouri you need to create a .env.local file or maybe a .env file go to the mongo uri and place the mongo url i have already created my mongo url i am using the mongodb atlas and i have already created it so now if i go to the browse collections currently it is empty because I haven't loaded any sample data or any form data. So, after doing this, after doing the configuration, we'll go to the form.psx. Before that, we have to create the API and we'll call the API in this form.psx. Then you can see the data in the MongoDB. Inside the API, first we'll create a form folder and inside it we'll create a route.ts inside the route.ts we'll first import the connect then the form from our model and then next response and next request from next slash server we'll write here a post function at first We'll take next request as the parameter. We'll write a try catch block here. For the catch, we are going to catching the error. We'll console.log out to the error and return the next response as the error and the status code of 500. Next, for the catch block, sorry, for the try block. We are going to take form data from our request.json and we are going to save the form and create with our new form data, create a new object in our database and on next response we are going to send a message of success and including the object that we have saved. So on saving this our API is ready, the post API. Let's fetch it in our form component. On our form component, inside the form tag, we are going to write our on submit and we'll submit function. Our handle submit function, first we'll do the prevent default, stop it from reloading and we'll set the loading to true. It will be an async function because we need to await for our database to fetch the data. We'll use a try catch block here. The catch block will console.log the error and finally block will set the loading function to false. We'll create an object inside try catch. A try block that is title, description, and questions. After that, on a const response variable or a constant, we are going to fetch the slash API slash form and with the method of post and with the json.stringify, we are sending our form data. If our response is okay, we'll console.log our response and we are going to push it to our page that is form list. For this router, just define const router at the top and import it from next navigation. 
So let's save it and let's check whether our API is working or not. So I'm opening the inspect and then the console. My form is ready. So let's click the save form. After processing it, the router has pushed it to the form list. And if I check the response here in the console, you can see it's true and the status is 201. So our API is working correctly. Now we need to fetch our form in the form list. To fetch all the forms here, we need to create a get route. So below the post route, I'm going to create a get route here. First, in the constant variable of forms, I'm going to find out all the routes in our MongoDB. And then we are going to send the response as uh, with a status of 200 and the all the form list. So this is our API which is created. I'm going to save it. Now we are going to the form list page. So here we are going to quickly code it the design of the form list. Before writing the CSS part of the form list, let us first write the state part like where we are going to call our API in the use effect and store our form data in use state. So first let us fetch the data. First I'll import the use state and the use effect. Here I have taken a use state of forms and set forms and also a loading state. So at first inside the use effect, I have uh, used a, a sync function where using the await, I have called the API that we have created this route.ts and then we have fetched our extracted exactly our response.json and send it to our set forms. There is a catch. We have used try and catch block to catch any error. And finally, our loading state will come to false. Next, we are calling this data and uh, using this dependency array, it will be run only once when the screen is mounted. And here it is called. On the above, we were going to write it as use client. As we are using the state. Inside the div, we are going to first uh, fetch the navbar. After that, we are going to write a main tag with the normal CSS of display grid, place item center with a padding of left and right as 7 and margin auto with full and a max width of 3xl. Here, I'm going to do a conditional rendering that is when there is the loading state, it should show a loading happening there. If there is no loading state, then only our forms will get shown there. That means until the loading state is on, it's not going to show any form. If there is no loading state and forms is present, then inside an unordered list, first I'm going to give a heading of all forms and then I'm going to fetch each form. Here I'm doing forms.form map using the map function and then extracting the form and the index. For the form type, I have used any here. I haven't described any particular TypeScript form. Inside the return index, in the return, I'm going to return a list here, which will have a class name of list decimal, flex, justify between item center, a border and a border color of gray with a padding 3 and a margin and a padding left and right 5. Now 
in between that i'm going to write the form title and it will have a link which will open to uh, the specific individual form so here it will have the class name and here the link open will be present there so first let us save it and check how it's looking you can see here this is the form that uh, we have fetched it we have created it just a few minutes earlier and we fetched it here this is our open sign on click of it we are going to open this individual form to make the open link clickable in this a tag i'm going to add the href where it is indicating to the form and then the form underscore id so this part we are going to create right now this is our form folder that we have already created at first inside the form folder we are going to create an id folder we are using this type of slug because we like each and every form uh, individual form will have its own id so to fetch that id from our params we are creating this slug inside form id we are going to create page.psx here inside the form we are going to write a server component this will be our server component first for this i have used use server here and then i have fetched the next dynamic next dynamic will help us to render the suspense fallback at first and then the main component will be rendered this will not initially render the javascript so it will give us the time to fetch the uh, params from our um, link and then we can fetch it and use it in our form to fetch our individual form information now this dynamic form view that is this part the component slash view we are going to create this component so inside our components we have this view.tsx here going to fetch the params and then the error will be gone from the form page you can see the error is now gone so let us save it we'll go back to our view.tsx and here we need to fetch our individual form details so to fetch that we are going to create another api inside our api slash form we are going to create another folder which will contain the id slug and inside it it will be route.ts so first we are going to call the mongodb details and the model and the next request and next response from the next slash server then i'm going to define the post api and this async function post we are using a try catch block in the catch i'm fetching the error and giving the response as status 500 with the error dot message and also console dot error i'm showing the what is the actual error inside the try block we are going to fetch the id as params in the form of request.json and then with the params we are going to find inside our mongodb database if our params existed or the form id existed if there is no form id then we can return the error as form not found and if there is form id then we are going to fetch the total individual form and going to send a status of 201 so like this way we are going to fetch individual form from mongodb so our api is ready now let us fetch the form in use effect so we'll go in the view.tsx 
and follow the same method that we have used to fetch all the forms. Here, first import the use state and then the use effect. And then you can see a const fetch data function has been created. So it's a sync function as we have used await here to fetch our API. We are getting the form ID from our params and with a method post and sending our body inside, like inside the body, we are sending json.stringify params. Then we are waiting for our response.json. If we get the data, then set forms, we are passing the data.form. Uh, else in the catch block, we are catching the error. And finally, we are setting the loading state to false. So this is our known use effect hook. Now to definitely remember when you're using the use effect or the state management, you should define the use client, otherwise Next.js will throw an error. At first, we are going to fetch the navbar. And then we are going to put a check on the loading state. If the state is on loading, then it should show that the function is currently loading. or a div with a loading name should be shown there. Else, it's going to show the individual detail of the form. Now, quickly, I'm going to write a bunch of CSS. You can always check it out in the code that will be given in the description so you don't miss it out. First, I'm going to give a div here which will have a min height of screen and some background. So let us first save and check how it is exactly looking like. If I click on the open, you can see in the params we have the individual form ID. And here, as I have given the background, this background is currently showing. Now let us write more code. Inside the div, I'm going to take a form field. containing some width full and overflow x hidden. Next, we'll take a div, which main target will be to fix the maximum width and also to make the content at center. To put a border like Google Form, we'll give this div, which will have a border and its color and with a width and also some displays. So save it, let's check. You can see this border is now currently here. We'll add two more divs. And then finally, we are going to add our title. If we save here, you can see this is our form title. If you want to check, if I go back, you can see this is our form title. And when we click open, the form title is at the top. Next, we'll write the description. Here we fetch the description from our forms. And if we save, you can check out this is our description. Next, we'll fetch our questions. Inside the div, we are here mapping out our form.questions. And with the first div in here, giving the key as the index, we have given our first CSS line, which will have some displays, justify center, and the max width with the margin auto. Next, at first, we are going to fetch our form text, that is our main question. Inside some divs, which we can always check out from the code. I have placed the quest.title and if I save it here, you can see our questions are now visible. This is our first question, this was our second question. Next, according to our question type, our answer or field will be visible. You can see if our question type is short answer, then we're going to call our short answer component and if it's paragraph we are going to call our paragraph component 
can see here for short answer is just a simple input field and for paragraph it's a text area finally we will be having a submit button here it will have some basic css class and a normal submit so after saving you can see our individual form is also ready so let us do a quick check from first to last how is our form working so let's create a professional form After writing the title and the description, let's add a question. This will be of short answer type. This will also be of short answer. This I want to be of paragraph type. This I also want to be of short answer. Now mm -hmm. I find it out that this our second question and our fourth question is almost the same. So I don't want the second question here. So I delete it. You can see our second question is deleted. Now this paragraph becomes our second question. And our form is almost ready. So let us save the form. And you can see in our all forms, the job applying form has come into view. Now let's open it. You can see on click, all our questions are becoming visible, even our title, our description, and our questions with the submit button. So our Google Form clone is working almost fine and very smoothly. If you have any doubts, do share in the comment section. And of course, the code details and the GitHub link will be provided in the description. Till then, this is Annie signing off. Let's meet in another new project.